the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Hello and welcome to COVID-19 update live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NTBN. Reaching you from our studio here in Asokoro, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Of course, I want to use this occasion also to wish all workers happy Workers' Day. Uh, oh, it is, I believe, an expectation that as you continue to contribute your quota to the development of our country, of course, posterity, we reward you. And on that note, of course, uh, we'd like to remind you again that COVID-19 Update Live is designed to bring to you the latest update of the ravaging COVID-19 infection in Nigeria and around the world with a view to educating you, our viewers, on some of the developments, not just in Nigeria, but around the world and all of the efforts being made by the federal government of Nigeria the World Health Organization and other stakeholders towards containing the spread of this deadly virus, which has killed well over 3 million people across the globe. So, we are ready and set to go, but before then, let's take this short break to water the ground for the show proper. Don't go nowhere. Hello Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I commend them. I urge them to continue to maintain uttermost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. <laughs> Welcome back. It's COVID-19 updates live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. Reaching you live from our studio here in Asoko, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Once again, my name is Doni Dia. Let's move to the latest figures released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, which g gives a total of 43 new cases of the coronavirus infection in Nigeria, with a breakdown of 28 in Lagos, 4 in FCT, 4 in River State, 2 in Akiti State, 2 in Kaduna, 2 also in Ogun State, and 1 in Bauchi State. And this brings the total confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection in Nigeria to 165,153, with 155,109 persons treated and discharged from the various isolation centers across the country. Uh, sadly, the death toll resulting uh, from COVID-19 complications in Nigeria is 2,000. 
and 63. On vaccine administration, a total of 1,229,738 persons have received the first jab of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, of course, which is the vaccine being used in Nigeria. And it is put at the proportion of 61.1% vaccinated. Moving to global scene, a total of 808,563 new cases of COVID-19 infection has been recorded by the World Health Organization, bringing the total confirmed cases of COVID-19 to 151,803, 151,803,822. And sadly, the death toll as a result of COVID-19 around the world is put at 3,186,530. On vaccine administered, a total of 1,11,457,859 jabs of the various COVID-19 vaccine have been administered to persons around the world. On regional breakdown, America still tops the charts with a total of 62,281,000 1,517 confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection. It followed by Europe, which has now confirmed a total of 51,912,774. Southeast Asia also recorded 22,675,230 cases of COVID-19. Eastern Mediterranean, 9,147,412. Africa, Nigeria's continent, recording 3,316,851. Western Pacific, which is the last on that chart, has 2,469,200. Confirmed cases of COVID-19. All of these figures are in total since the days of their first in this case to the present day. And let's move to the story which says Nigeria bans travelers from Brazil, India, and Turkey. And the story says the federal government of Nigeria announced on Sunday that it has banned passengers from Brazil, India, and Turkey as the country's battle third wave of coronavirus with effect from 4th of May 2021. People who have visited the country within 14 days preceding their travel to Nigeria will also not be allowed entry. The chairman of the Presidential Senate Committee on COVID-19 and the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said that Nigerians and those with permanent resident permit who visited Brazil, India, or Turkey within 14 days preceding travel to Nigeria shall be made to undergo seven days of mandatory quarantine in a government-approved facility at the point of entry, city, and at cost of the passenger. He said airlines that fail to comply with measures will pay a fine of $3,500 penalty for each defaulting passenger with non-Nigerians to be denied entry and return to the country of embarkation at cost to airline. The story further stated that this regulation, however, does not apply to passengers who transited through these countries. But Mustafa advised Nigerians to avoid any non-essential international travel to any country at this period, and specifically to countries that are showing rising number of cases and deaths. Of course, that, that story is just 
a follow-up to what we discussed earlier on the program about the third wave of COVID-19 surge in India. Of course, Indian has been in the news in the last two weeks owing to the rise in cases. Of course, not just infections spreading like wildfire, but we've seen the hospitals, many of the hospitals in India are already overwhelmed with a lot of a lot of casualties on daily basis. First, the government has also raised concern on the need for other countries around the world and the World Health Organization to come to its rescue by providing and assisting them with aids that can help them uh, contain and deal with the situation. Well, our love goes out to India uh, and all the nationals of that country course, we show solidarity to them at this point and hope that all of the efforts being made by, of course, the government of that country, the World Health Organization, and all the partner agencies will yield positive results. It is really worrisome to see the number of deaths as a result of, in fact, uh, many, uh, there are a lot of spaces that have now been converted to cremation centers. Uh, I watched a video where um, someone was talking about um, who works in a graveyard saying that he works 24 hours round the clock, both day and night, uh, and it's really, really, really devastating. Seeing people losing their loved ones in their very eyes without having any respite or solutions to that. Well, we continue to remember India and Turkey and Brazil in our prayers on, on a daily basis and continue to show the little support to ensure that that country come out of this third wave. And of course, part of the measures to also checkmate the flow of such epidemic or perhaps saving Nigeria also from moving into third wave is what we've just read, of course, the move by the federal government of Nigeria, which is really commendable at this time being proactive because it's not just about Nigeria. Uh, other countries, of course, even in Europe and in America and Asia, there are a lot of countries who have already placed restrictions on flights coming from India. We understand that people have to go about their businesses to make ends meet and other engagement, but then uh, like they said, COVID-19 does not move. It is the people who move and take the virus along. So uh, this is not in any way to show less concern um, to the countries affected, but it's just a measure also to protect the citizens of Nigeria, especially at this critical point. And well, uh, for those that will be coming in, as we've stated, of course, there are efforts for them to be isolated and quarantined for certain numbers of days just to monitor the developments, after which they will take their test again to be sure that they are going to be integrated into this society the system in Nigeria. Well, moving to other story, Nigeria maintains low fatality rate. And the story says it's a commendable one anyway. Despite the second wave of COVID-19, which has brought more contagious variants, Nigeria is maintaining low fatality rate, with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC reporting only three fatalities in three weeks. Well, you might say it's only, but, uh, well, it's really sad um, losing three compatriots so we won't just say only, but losing three uh, compatriots, uh, it is really painful and worrisome. But what the story is trying to say is that unlike what we've had in the past, that the numbers are declining. Um, nobody uh, should die uh, as a result of COVID-19. But sadly, we are seeing some of this development. Um, and the story further says, this brings the total number of deaths in the country to 2,063. The drastic reduction is respite for Nigerians after the initial stage of the second wave when the country's fatality rate soared. 
with 416 deaths recorded in six weeks between January 1 and February 11, 2021. Nigerians have, however, attributed the decline in fatality rate to the ongoing vaccination against the disease. Of course, we know there are a lot of effort being made, especially to encourage people to get vaccinated. I think that is the way to go. It's, however, a thing of concern that Nigeria might not receive s more supply of the COVID-19 vaccine as initially planned, but efforts are already in top gear by the federal government of Nigeria in partnership with the World Health Organization, the African Union, and other stakeholders to ensure that we get the other batches of the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, there is another story that says life-saving oxygen aid arrives in India as death toll its new record. Uh, well, the story said more emergency medical aid from foreign donors to alleviate a dare oxygen shortage arrived in India on Sunday as COVID-19 death is in the South Asian nation rose to a new record. India is setting almost daily records for new infections and death as the virus crisis engulfs overstretched hospitals in cities and spreads into rural region. Of course, before I continue with that story, we remember during the first a uh, wave of COVID-19 in Nigeria, um, which led to the lockdown, the total lockdown. One of the concerns which the federal government raised and other medical experts is that of community um, infection, you know, like community transmission of COVID-19. And that is just what we're seeing already happening in India. Because, you know, the, the level of hygiene in the rural communities and perhaps education in rural communities might not be as high as what you have in urban centers. Um, so, and this is why the, the, the development is really delving a blow in the society in India. And the story further says the country of 1.3 billion reported three 1,689 deaths on Sunday. 3,689 deaths in just one day. The highest single day rise yet in the pandemic to take the overall toll to more than 215,000. Just under 400,000 infections were added, bringing the total number of cases past 19.5. 5 million. The latest figures came as medical equipment, including oxygen generation plants, was flown into the capital, New Delhi, from France and Germany as part of a huge international effort. Of course, we cannot uh, overemphasize the need for countries to rise up to the occasion to assist India and at this time because with the huge population of India, 1.3 billion, uh, of course, you know, if this increases, people will be forced, if they can't go through the airport, people will be forced to move either by sea or through the land borders to escape from the city. Because when, once you have this kind of search, or this kind of development, people just run from one place to the other just looking for safety. So it is a crisis that can degenerate and makes the go out of control if something is not done, if support, if help does not come. And that is why we're commending all of the donor agencies and countries, donor countries who have supported India at this time because it is a, a very huge tax for the government of that country to deal with, seeing in just one day over 3,000 persons losing their lives, a country losing over 3,000 of its compatriots in just a day. It's really painful and worrisome. And we continue to remember India in our daily prayers and in all of our thinking, just as the world continues to battle with COVID-19 infection. Of course, remember, India is not just the country that is ravaged by the coronavirus and the third wave of 
COVID-19 surge. We've seen other countries, like we've said, uh, Brazil, Turkey. You know, there are also other countries that, of course, the rate, the casualty, the mortality rate might not be as high as what we've seen in India. But then there are other countries, too, who on daily basis are recording casualties as a result of COVID-19 complications. Of course, there are other countries, too, who perhaps might be under-reporting some of this development. And that is why on this program, it is our effort to use all of this, to bring to you some of this development and use that also to educate you, our viewing populace, on the need for you to also be on guard. Now, there is another story that says COVID-19 cases fall sharply in U.S. And the story says new cases of COVID-19 are dropping sharply across the U.S. as millions of people get vaccinated daily, fully optimizing that the nation may have averted the surge of infection gripping other parts of the world and is finally turning the corner on what was one of the worst outbreak globally. As of Saturday, the seven-day average of daily new cases fell to under 50,000 for the first time since October and is down 17% from a week prior, according to some analysts of data from John Hopkins University. Hospitalizations and deaths from the disease are also falling. Cases are falling as more Americans get vaccinated. To date, more than 100 million people in the U.S. have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or nearly a third of the population, about 146 million people, or 44 percent of the population, has received at least one dose of vaccine. Former Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Scott on Sunday said that the prescription, the precipitous drop in new COVID-19 cases in the United States was likely to continue, predicting a relatively quiet summer when it comes to coronavirus spread. Of course, uh, I, I think I want to agree with that, that, of course, most of this country are moving into summer and many want to go on holiday. So it's better to keep it very, very quiet, to keep it calm. Because one of the challenges or the problem that led to the surge in India, and as reported in the, in the media, is the fact that many people return back to social activities, social and religious activities, where we saw in videos that are trending online, seen huge crowd of people gathering for social activities and religious activities. In some cases, some of them in the same uh, uh, river, baiting and doing all of their uh, social, uh, perhaps spiritual uh, activities. Well, it is not for us to condemn anybody or to condemn uh, either social or religious activity, but there is a problem in the land, not just in the land, but around the world. It is a problem that has halted a lot of economies that has put governments on their toes. This is a problem that has even choked a lot of medical personnel. So it is only important that people know the extent of damage that coronavirus is delving in society and in economies around the world. And it's, it, it's better for us to stay alive and stay safe by just listening and complying with the little or perhaps the guidelines given by medical experts and government. Of course, government across the world have continued to enlighten people. The World Health Organization, in conjunction with other stakeholders, have continued to put up news and trendy stories to educate people information about this virus, how it mutates and how it spread. And it's only important for us to be responsible for once. Now there is another story saying UNICEF chief urges the world to help India now as COVID 
19 cases so far. And the story says the executive director of UNICEF, Enrietta Four, said that it is very worried uh, about the current COVID-19 crisis in India and urged the world to send urgent help to the country. Speaking during World Immunization Week, Four also said it was a race to save lives through vaccination, particularly in some of the world's poorest countries with very fragile health system. India is in the midst of a deadly wave of the virus. On Saturday, daily coronavirus cases in the country passed 400,000 for the first time. Total cases in India have now top 19 million and more than 215,000 people have died from COVID-19 in that country. It is worrying for several reasons. One, is it a precursor to what might happen in other countries, particularly countries in Africa with much weaker healthcare system uh, for said. It is worrying because their healthcare system has been overwhelmed. It is the need for oxygen and therapeutic that we just have not seen in this pandemic in another country, at least this scale. Of course, what she's trying to say is that what is happening in India calls for collective participation, just as it is a signal warning to other poorer nations, or perhaps poorer nations of the world, especially in Africa, many of which have very weak health care systems. So we just have to continue to remember India in our third, and we want to wish them the very best, even as they struggle so hard to contain the spread of this deadly disease that has killed uh, millions of people around the world. Well, our time flies. Uh, this is where we shall draw the curtain on this edition of the program. Remember, you can give us a feedback via our email, which you're seeing on the screen, COVID-19 update at ncbn.engine. We'll be glad to receive your feedbacks and, of course, attend to your question. My name is Doni Dia saying stay safe. Bye-bye for now.